Hey, welcome back to another Inktober prompt video. Today is number 24, CHOP! CHOP! Is usually an action, so I initially thought of a chef. I played with a few other ideas since I thought I should try something other than the first thing I thought of, but in the end, I couldn't get out of the mindset of it being an action. I went through a ninja, someone Chop. chopping wood, etc. I even thought of a pork CHOP! But I just kind of liked the idea of a chef better. Cooking is something that my husband and I both enjoy doing, almost like a second hobby. It's something that brings the family together. So, a couple videos ago, someone asked if I could draw a cat girl or boy sometime soon. Uh, I do have an actual OC cat boy that I planned on making a character sheet for. I figured I could probably even do it sooner than that though, and kind of wanted to try to work it into a prompt. A chopping chef cat girl seemed like a pretty fitting idea. I didn't make her look like a typical chef though, you know, the chef hat and the chef jacket, although it was very tempting. I wanted her to look more like she was just making herself a meal, but that she's actually quite good at cooking. Maybe she works as a chef and that's why this is, or it's just a hobby, a passion, or skill that she's honing over time. So as I've said before, uh, Usabel and Corinne are kind of my first original characters in a very long time. And they are actually my first ever animal eared characters. So every time that I draw these animal ears, it's always a bit of a, a new experience for me. But because of that, one thing that I'm trying to get my head wrapped around is that when drawing animal eared characters, where the ears are supposed to be set. I know for the most part, you can just put them on the top of their head, depending on the animal. However, I really like drawing headphones and while this character isn't wearing any at the moment, I'm always at a loss when trying to figure out how to get them to fit certain animal ears. So I just kind of slid them down a bit so they're more or less on the sides of her head and uh, made them a bit bigger than I normally would have. I think it fits pretty well. Uh, I did this mainly because of a doodle I did of Usabel where she had headphones on and I realized that the way her ears were didn't facilitate the headphones. Without making up a completely new style of headphones, um, which I kind of messed around with, I decided to, to just be on the sides of her head. I'm still getting used to drawing their ears like this, and I'm having a hard time, in particular with Usabel being expressive through her ears, since they are so large, I feel like they should be part of her, her expressions. But I actually really like the placement a lot better. You can see it pretty early on in this video, before I add details to the ears and the hair where they are set on the chef's head. It can also be a bit difficult to decide on hairlines and how the hair is going to react to the ears. Some people make it where it almost seems like the ears act like kind of like a bald spot on the head. And others make the ears part the hair like a rock in a river. Personally, and it's just a matter of preference, I prefer the latter. I feel like it just suits my style a little bit better. Uh, for instance, that's why I add hair clips to this character because it keeps her hair from blocking her ears. I just feel it's a bit more realistic and, I mean, we are talking about a cat girl so that's kind of a moot point, but that also calls into question where to put the tail. Some have it sprout directly out of the lower back and it's almost like it's on a ball joint. Like it can go directly up their back and then still curl around or even under them. But others make it like almost a continuation of the spine. I usually like it to be part of the spine since that's how real cat tails usually are. And again, I'm not trying to make this like overly realistic. We're talking about a cat girl here. It's all just a matter of preference and how you prefer the, the character to look. The other way would just kind of bother me sometimes if I made the cat tail go up too high and then it would end up looking or feeling like the, the cat girl would almost be in pain. And I know technically cat tails do stand directly straight up, but if a cat were to actually walk upright, the tail wouldn't necessarily go right up their back. And that's all I'm trying to, to emulate whenever I make a cat girl or a cat boy. But again, that's just personal preference. And it's all about how you are happy with your character looking. So speaking of tails, I didn't draw an obvious tail because I figured she's actually a bobcat. And uh, if she did have a longer tail, I would have still kept it low because I figured you want to keep that out of the way when you're wielding a knife. I didn't forget it or anything. I did actually consider giving her a tail after I started drawing this just because of how much negative space is behind her but I thought it might look a little out of place up so high. Like I said, I tend to put the tail as a continuation of the spine and I felt like it wouldn't really be able to bend directly up her back or at least high enough to really come into the frame. My other original characters, Usabel and Corinne, also follow these set of rules. 
whether it's Curran's tail or Usabel's ears, which Usabel's ears were the main inspiration for setting in stone how I was going to draw my animal-eared characters or races from top to bottom. I thought it would be more fun to have her stylistically chopping the sausage rather than realistically, and that it would exaggerate her skills with the knife. I did keep her other hand in that cat paw state that you do since you're supposed to keep your fingers like that to avoid catching them while cutting food, but as also a bit of a pun. She is making herself some breakfast. She has some eggs, cilantro, spices, and of course the sausage. I put a cute design on her shirt to make her seem like she's more relaxed, like she was at home, like she's in her, her normal clothes. This is her everyday stuff. And after making her ponytail so fluffy, I thought it would look appropriate if she had a shirt with some kind of logo on it. I almost considered having her make mangu, but without color, platanos just kind of look like bananas and it wouldn't really make sense. Mangu is a Dominican dish made by taking platanos when they're still green, so they're not ripe yet, before they turn yellow, boiling and then mashing them, quite similar to how you would prepare a potato. And mangu can be eaten throughout the day. Dominicans will typically eat it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And if you couldn't guess, that's why I call myself mangu. I'm like a Spanish potato. Yeah. I zoomed in a bit to get a better view of the inking and Copic phase, but the camera likes to focus on my hand on and off as well. I really like this one for its simplicity. I like her fluffy ponytail especially. I should have made her a little bit more expressive, but I like it overall. I was able to put some action lines on the knife and make some chop marks at certain intervals of the sausage, and I think it came out pretty well. I'm a little bummed that the background is so bare, but as we get to the last few prompts, my thumbnails are a little bit less and less intricate, which is okay. I guess I kind of burned out in the thumbnail phase, and to be honest, I am very much feeling the burnout now. Not every single one of these has to meet the challenge of adding a background, and a lot of them did, and I'm happy with that, but right now I'm just trying to enjoy these last few prompts. I actually considered putting her tail up just to have something in the background, but as I stated before, I just, I don't know, I feel like it would have been weird. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed The Cat Chef, and I'll be back tomorrow with another Inktober prompt, Prickly. Bye!